Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again, and welcome to The Roads with Bo. Today is March 31st, 2024, and this is episode 32 of The Roads Not Taken, a weekly series where we go through the previous week's events and talk about news that is unreported, underreported, didn't get the attention I thought it deserved, or simply lacked context, or I just find it interesting. Um, And then at the end, we go through some questions from y'all picked by the team. Okay. Oh, by the way, Happy Easter to those who celebrate. Uh, and I know people are waiting for something. Don't worry, that's coming. Okay. Foreign policy news, starting off there. Russia used its veto to protect North Korea at the UN. The resolution that was vetoed, it, it would have investigated suspected sanction violations. China's leader met with U.S. business leaders to talk about the economy. It certainly seemed like the goal was to present the Chinese economy as something to invest in. And as tensions slowly thaw, there's probably going to be more of that. Uh, News from Ukraine. Ukraine is saying they may have to retreat from certain areas without aid. That aid is currently being held up by the GOP. Uh, Ukraine is also getting ready to push out its higher-end artillery and put that back into action because they have some ammo on the way. The U.S., while denying aid, is asking Ukraine to not hit inside Russia, particularly when it comes to oil infrastructure. Uh, Those requests are probably going to be ignored because the U.S. lost its influence when it, you know, stopped providing aid. Influence and aid tend to go hand in hand. Um, A second shipment by boat from World Central Kitchen and Open Arms is headed to Gaza from Cyprus. That second shipment is underway. I want to say... It has 300 tons on it. it has uh, food and aid. The Palestinian Authority has announced a new cabinet. A number of them are from Gaza, so it does appear that they're trying to do that. The reception from Palestinians was lukewarm, um, but to be honest, anything short of outright hostility is kind of a win. Uh, The Palestinian Authority does not have a lot of warm, fuzzy feelings from most Palestinians. Um, That new cabinet, they have their work cut out for them because they have to find a way to garner support and they have to demonstrate that the new boss is not the same as the old boss. So they, they have a lot of work to do. The U.S. says that famine is likely present in northern Gaza now. It is. It is present. Um, Okay, moving on to U.S. news. A uh, judge has recommended that uh, pro-Trump attorney John Eastman lose his law license. There are, I think there's still one more step. There's still one more step in that process. Uh, Republican Tim Wahlberg appeared to suggest using nuclear weapons in Gaza. Um, USNS Harvey Milk completed its maiden voyage. A judge, a judge has found a ranking member of the Georgia GOP who spread a bunch of claims about the 2020 elections. Um, he, he, the judge found that he voted illegally Satire is dead. Um, Cranes are working to clear the debris, open up the harbor there where the bridge fell. Uh, Trump supporters in Wisconsin appear to be gearing up for another attempt to try to recall the Republican Assembly Speaker up there, who happens to be one of the most powerful Republicans in the state. We'll see how that plays out. A Texas appeals court has ruled against the state and their desire 
to launch probes into parents who are allowing their children to get gender-affirming care. So the, the appeals court ruled against the state on that. Moving on to cultural news, truth social stock is, is riding a bubble that is defying all expectations. Um, when that happens, it is going to be a moment. Just, that's going to be a moment. Um, Republicans are super mad today um, because today is both Easter and the uh, Trans Day of Visibility. They appear to be angry because they are unsure of how calendars work. For those who don't know, March 31st is always Trans Day of Visibility. Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon that follows the spring equinox. Sometimes that is also on March 31st. In science news, Puerto Rico has declared a health emergency over dengue cases. A report says that more than half the water from the Colorado River is being used for the agricultural industry. Um, and highly pathogenic uh, avian flu, bird flu, is appearing in unpasteurized samples from cows in the U.S. We will definitely be following that. In oddities, a Texas man changed his name to, quote, literally anybody else. It's his legal name. And is running for president. Vote for literally anybody else. Okay, moving on to the questions. Only looks like a few here. Um, how do you know or determine when we'll see this material again? It's knowing what the building blocks are. Um, th this is something that it used to be common. This stuff used to be covered. And it's not journalists. It, it's news outlets. They don't provide the context. They don't provide the lead up to events the way that I think they should. If you see the building blocks being put into place, things are less shocking and surprising when they happen. The thing is, the current news industry is based off the shocking and surprising, so they don't do it. Um, give you an example. Um, Okay, we just talked about the Palestinian Authority and the new cabinet. The plan got floated to use a, quote, revitalized Palestinian Authority to administer both the West Bank and Gaza. That was put out there, and we mentioned it because it was floated in a couple of different ways, which certainly seemed to indicate they were testing the waters. Once the old cabinet was kind of shown the door, headed for the door, however that played out. At that moment, it was very clear that they were going to try to enact that because they talked about it, they floated the idea, it got an okay reception, and then once the old cabinet members resigned, we knew that they were going to try to bring in a new cabinet, one that would hopefully be acceptable to all Palestinians, and that's what they're trying to do. Um, so from the second, from the second the old cabinet resigned, you were going to see that material again. It's just knowing what the building blocks are, and, and talking about them as they occur, rather than just waiting for something that's going to be a, a good headline. Okay. There are two questions about this, and you said that this was something you'd probably make a video about. That's obviously from the team. Okay. <clears throat> I talked to my dad on the phone and told him about that Green Beret patch that's all over Insta. He was a Green Beret and said it was BS and that skulls have always been a part of Green Beret symbols. WTF is my dad overlooking fash symbols. 
Okay, so a little bit of background on this. Uh, I believe it was 20th SF put a photo on Instagram. One of the people in that photo was wearing a patch. That patch had a, a skull on it. That skull is closely associated with things you would rather not see. Uh, the Germans from World War II and, and like the, the bad ones. Um, the uh, Obviously, when people saw that skull, it prompted a lot of backlash. And looking at the other question, we'll get to the resolution there. But the uh, it, it's not a symbol you would expect to see on a U.S. uniform. Okay, it's it's not appropriate. Okay, so as far as your dad goes, no, he's right. He's right. See what you're saying. I talked to my dad on the phone and told him about that Green Beret patch that's all over Insta. He was a Green Beret and said it was BS and that skulls have always been a part of Green Beret symbols. That's 100% true. Just not that skull. I would strongly suggest sending him the image. Text it to him. I'm willing to bet his attitude is going to change. Because if I had to guess, um, type in mess with the best, die like the rest, Green Beret skull. That's the skull he's thinking of, which sometimes is even paired with palms. Um, that is not the skull that was on that patch. It's, it, again, it's inappropriate. Um, so my guess is that he is picturing the skull images that have they have been a part of Green Beret symbols going back at least to the, yeah, I mean, to the, kind of the beginning. Um, very popular from the early days of Vietnam on, but it's not the same skull. Um, so I would make sure that he knows which skull it is. Okay, the next question. Is there any way to give the 20th group guy the benefit of the doubt on that patch? Every SF guy I've ever met was pretty cool. Okay. Um, depends on what you mean by benefit of the doubt. Um, he didn't know at some point in time the, the racist connotations that go with that skull. Maybe, maybe, but this, it, there's a little bit of a backstory here that, that should probably be told. Right now, 20th Group is catching all of the static for this because they posted the photo. The thing is, from my understanding, that is not a 20th Group logo. That was a logo that was used as kind of like an unofficial logo by a subgroup of 3rd Group. And third group, the command over there, found out about it years ago and banned it. So the chain of events required to give him the benefit of the doubt as far as him wearing something that he knew he shouldn't, it, it's it would take a it would take him leaving in like 2021 completely separating and going back into the National Guard, ending up in 20th group. Like, it would be a chain of events that it would be really specific. Um, even with that, his command, even if they give him a pass on, okay, you didn't know what the skull was and you weren't intentionally trying to be racist with it, even if they give him that, there's still the judgment issue when it comes to wearing something that was banned by another command. And then you have to think about the fact that it's SF and their job, they should be able to ingratiate themselves into other cultures. I feel like his command is going to be like, yeah, you should have known the subtext of this. Um, the, like, I get what you're saying. Every SF guy I've ever met was pretty cool, meaning you don't see them 
as the type of people who would, you know, wear those kinds of symbols. For whatever reason, um, that particular skull is starting to show up in a lot of places. I don't know that everybody knows what it means, and I don't know that they're viewing it the way that they should. It's not an image that should be on a U.S. uniform. Um, so I, I, I do not feel like his command is going to give him the benefit of the doubt unless, again, unless it is a very specific thing where he left before it was banned so he didn't know and then maybe it was on an old piece of equipment that he was using, you know, that he had in his kit after he came back to the National Guard. Like, the chain of events required is, it, it, it's a reach. Um, I, I don't think that this guy is, is I, I feel like he's going to get in trouble. Um, the other thing to be aware of, since this has come up, and even though currently it's still in, a pretty small group of people talking about it. Eventually, somebody's going to pick up on this, and it'll become a wider news story. Uh, if you're in armor, I would imagine those images of, you know, Rommel and like the burning tanks and all of that stuff. They're probably going to have to go too. Um, because of this, I feel like this is going to be. It's going to become a blanket thing, DoD wide, and. For those who don't know, American tankers often had, I don't know if they still do this, but there used to be like images of Rommel because they went up against him in a tank like on fire, but it has the same images. Um, those are probably going to be, if they're still up, I imagine the command's going to say take them down. Um, so, okay. Do you believe there could be, do you believe that there could be an Oma moment with the current situation in Gaza? If you do, why don't you tell everybody to chill out? Um, okay, an Oma moment is a period, it's a moment in cyclical violence where things get so bad that peace becomes a real possibility. Do I believe that that's the case here? Yes. I do believe that that window is going to open. And if not, imagine how bad it would have to be. If, if this doesn't create one, I don't know what will. Um, so I, I do believe that that window is going to open. The thing is, that window's not open long. Um, so if you do believe that, why don't you tell everybody to chill out? Uh, number one, because people are dying. Um, number two, all of the pressure that is building, like across the board, when that window opens, hopefully that pressure is going to push through it. Um, I, As bad as it is and as bad as it is likely to get, I, I do believe there's a chance. Um, but if that chance occurs, the window of time in which to get something done, it's short. So all of the pressure, it, it's, it's creating that urgency. So when that window opens, hopefully our betters will see fit to, to push through it. And anybody who is reluctant to to go through it they get drug along with it even if they don't want to um because I, I i do i think this is probably the best chance in a generation so i i don't know how you could tell people to chill out when it comes to this um so okay so those are the questions and that's it. So there's a little more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day.